want to come first to my two experts because that big order, uh, that big story has broken uh, at the moment. And Tarlochan Shastri, you've been involved in it, which is electoral bonds. Now the State Bank of India is saying we can't uh, adhere to the uh, March 6 deadline to give all the details. We want it extended to the 30th of June. This coming on a date, a day when the Supreme Court seems to want to clean up public life. How do you interpret that? Is it as some are suggesting, I've just seen Rahul Gandhi's tweet claiming that the government wants to hide the details of electoral bonds. Do you go along with that or does the SBI need more time in your view? You know, I am not going to speculate, Rajdeep, but from ADR side, we do not like what the SBI has said and we have already decided to challenge this in court. So whenever the matter comes up, we will challenge it in court. And uh, all these speculations about why it's being done, uh, I would not like to enter into it because from ADR's perspective, we don't know why the AD, uh, SBI is No, so this. from ADR's but perspective, and I'm going to put that breaking news court. flash, from ADR's perspective, which is a petitioner, you're saying you're going to challenge what the State Bank of India has done. The State Bank of India has said this is a very complex process. Professor Shastri, there are thousands of uh, uh, calculations to be made for, for entries to be looked at. Do you go along with that or not? See, Rajdeep, you yourself said that, uh, and India is a powerhouse in information technology and the use of computers and software. Mm -hmm. So I don't see any reason for this requiring uh, three months. Mm -hmm. And the SBI, if at all they had any apprehension, they should have said it on day one or day two. They cannot mm -hmm. say it. On the 4th of March, when the details have to be given on the 6th of March. So we are definitely from ADR side going to challenge this um, extension in court. It's really up to the Honorable Supreme Court to decide what to do. Okay, so a ADR says it's going to challenge the extension. Sanjay Hegde, just to get a legal perspective to that, on a day, as I said, where the court has come down very strongly and said MPs cannot get immunity for prosecution for bribes they take, the entire issue of electoral bonds has now come up late this evening and State Bank of India says we need more time. In your view, can, should the court be giving them more time given that we are heading into a general election in a few weeks from now? Well, I can't speak for the court. But as a lawyer, from a lawyer's perspective, on day one I had predicted this. I had said that there would be an attempt to slow walk the judgment, the implementation of the judgment, so that the elections were safely over. Mm -hmm. Basically, what do you have? You have data points. Even if there were 22,000 electoral bonds which were actually issued, it is not that the data regarding each of their purchasers is a separate discrete data point. Those 22,000 uh, uh, bonds would have probably been sold to about how many? 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 people. They, the question of matching each of those data points to the people who actually cashed each electoral bond. Because mm -hmm. I've, each of those bonds has a unique number. Even if you give the data as to who cashed how many bonds or how many bonds remained out of circulation that they were issued but, ne but uh, they were never encashed. Mm -hmm. Even so, by a process of elimination, it is not rocket science, it is not hard labor, it is not going over 1980s ledgers to, to try and figure out who, who, who has bought what and who, who cashed it. Okay. The, the Supreme Court would, in my view, do well to say, give us what you have so far. And then okay. we will decide whether you made an honest effort to comply with our judgment. 